Hello everyone, welcome to Screencast SC10140. This is our last screencast in the Wireless Enterprise series. Today we are going to be creating adoption policies. So let's get started. Before we create adoption policies, let's have a look at what is required by a device to function on a network. As per the Wing 5 architecture, every single device, whether it's an RFS 7000, 6000 or an AP, it has to be mapped to an RF domain and a device profile. The, from the RF domain, the device gets its uh, country code settings, its small RF policies, WIPs policies, etc. And from the device profile, the device gets configuration parameters like firewall policies, wireless and mappings, etc. Now let's look at how the adoption policies help group APs within the network. So what is an adoption policy? Adoption policies are like firewall rules. Based on certain filters, actions can be taken. Filters could be IP addresses, serial numbers, MAC addresses, and the actions could be what kind of RF domain and profile should be assigned to an, to an AP. So assume an AP is coming from subnet 192.168.5.0. Based on that subnet, we can force that AP to get a certain profile and a certain RF domain. This enables the admin to group devices based on certain locations or certain parameters. In our topology today, we are going to be plugging two APs to the network. The first AP is going to be plugged into a subnet 192.168.5.0 and the second AP is going to be plugged into a subnet 192.168.6.0. The first rule will filter APs coming from the 192.168.5.0 subnet and assign them a profile of site 1 and an RF domain uh, of site 1. Uh, the second rule will uh, filter APs coming from 192.168.6.0 and uh, give them the profile site 2 and the RF domain uh, as site 2 as well. If uh, any other AP is plugged into the network which is not in either of these subnets, they would get the default profile and the default uh, RF domain that is already defined uh, in the RFS switch. I have loaded the config from uh, our previous screencast SC10120. Uh, we will now log into the RFS 7000. The default uh, username set is uh, admin and the password has been changed to symbol. Now to create our adoption policy, we will uh, navigate to configuration and as you can see here under devices, uh, there is something called as adoption policy. So let's go ahead and click on adoption policies. As mentioned earlier, uh, adoption policies essentially are uh, similar to firewall rules. So let's go ahead and add our first adoption policy. I'm just going to call this uh, wireless. Click on continue. And let's add our first rule. The first rule is uh, to allow uh, any AP 7131. Uh, coming in from a subnet. So I'm going to choose IP address. Uh, in our topology, we have uh, site 1 and site 2. Site 1 is uh, 192.168.5.0. So we we'll add that subnet here. Let's choose our RF domain and let's choose our profile. Click OK. So with this uh, rule over here, uh, when an AP comes into the network, uh, if it is of type AP7131 and it has an IP address belonging to this subnet, which is 192.168.5.0, it would automatically get assigned an RF domain of site 1 and a profile of site 1 as well. Uh, let's create our second adoption policy. Just got to be a bit careful here. As you can see, again, the rule precedence that shows up here is 1. Make sure you change that to 2. Uh, if you do not do so, it will overwrite our previous policy. Again, let's uh, choose IP address as our filter. And let's choose the subnet to be 192.168.6.0, which is uh, coming from our site 2. And we will choose our RF domain to be uh, site 2. And we would choose our profile to be site uh, 2 as well. Let's click OK. Let ex let's exit out of here. Now, these are just uh, a policy or a firewall. I mean, these are just policies and rules that have been created. They will not take effect unless until they are mapped to a certain device. 
Uh, in our case, the device is going to be the RFS uh, 7000 since that's going to be uh, adopting these APs. So let's go to our profiles. Uh, let's just go to the RFS 7000 profile. And uh, if you go under uh, cluster, there is an option here that says adoption policy. So you can highlight adoption policy. And as you can see, our adoption policy of wireless shows up here. If you do not map this adoption policy as wireless, the APs will come into the network and just get adopted using the default policy. Our new policies will not get uh, applied. And we got to make sure that we uh, map it right here so that it takes effect. Let's click OK. Let's uh, exit out of here. Let's commit our changes and let's save it. Now, if we uh, plug the APs into our network, we should see two APs uh, showing up here with the right policies. We have plugged our uh, APs into the network, and once they get adopted, uh, we should be seeing uh, them show up on this table right here. As you can see right now, uh, in our network, we only have uh, one device, which is the RFS 7000. It uh, has a, a default RF domain and a profile name. Uh, our APs are coming from two different subnets, and we expect them to get uh, the respective sites based on what's been mapped on our adoption policy. Uh, as you can see, our adoption policy uh, is set to uh, adopt APs coming from two different subnets. And that is also a default if an AP comes in and uh, it does not have the matching rule in there. It will just adopt using the default policy. And that's this checkbox right here. If you uncheck this box, any APs that do not match the certain filter, they will not get adopted. They would show up on your controller, but they would ne not get adopted. So let's go back uh, to devices. Our APs have been adopted. Uh, as seen in this table over here, this particular AP has got uh, an RF domain mapped to site 1. The profile is mapped to our profile site 1. Uh, this is coming from the 192.168.6.5.0 uh, uh, subnet. And this particular AP uh, is coming from site 2, and hence it has the site 2 parameters assigned to it. If we double click on this uh, AP, uh, we can go ahead and change uh, anything at the device level. Now, this is not recommended but uh, you sure have an option to do so. The last thing we need to do is uh, map the right RF domain to our RFS 7000. Uh, as mentioned earlier, every single device is uh, supposed to have an RF domain as well as a profile map to it. So let's uh, navigate to devices. Uh, if you just double click on AP731, we can see that they have their appropriate RF domain and uh, profile name, which they got from the adoption policy. However, for the uh, RFS 7000, there is no such concept of adoption, uh, and hence we will have to manually assign our RF domain uh, to this uh, uh, device. Now, this is where uh, we will go and make changes to device level configuration. Ideally, you would want to do everything from the profile. Uh, but this one setting uh, has to be done from here. So we can just go ahead and uh, under the uh, basic device category, as you can see, we have our uh, pull down for RF domain. I'm going to choose corp since that's what we decided the RF domain to be. Uh, we did not create any profiles for the 7K. We're just using the default profile. Uh, again, every single device is supposed to have an RF domain as well as a profile map to it. If there isn't one user defined profile or RF domain, uh, the device would inherit the defaults. So we have, we have assigned our RF domain uh, to the uh, device. It now has a country code set to it. So let's click OK. Let's uh, commit our changes and let's save. The config file for today's screencast can be downloaded from the link seen on your screen. You should now be able to successfully deploy a wireless enterprise. Thank you.